It's not always this easy to see the hidden beauty of Chartier's Creek. Nestled in its deep cut banks, the little stream winds its way through a wide variety of towns and terrain, often unnoticed except for an occasional glimpse through the shade of the trees. We drive over and beside it without a thought of where it comes from and where it's going. We live, work, play, and build around and beside the creek and seldom think about the mighty job it does for us or the fragile niche that it holds in our rapidly growing community. Seen from the air, however, the picture becomes much clearer. The Chartiers Creek Valley runs through the heart of the southwestern suburbs of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In recent years, this region that lies between the city and the new Pittsburgh International Airport has seen an explosion of intensive development. Highways, industrial parks, new residential areas, and vast shopping malls have crowded the little stream into a narrow strip of green embattled on all sides. Construction and expansions that often run right up to the creek's banks have impacted heavily on the natural space needed to keep a stream healthy and alive. And yet, not so far away, the creek runs through long stretches that are still wild and open as a national forest. It was these contrasts, the threats and opportunities that exist right now for the future of Chartier's Creek that called for a new vision of how this stream serves our community. In 1998, the Chartier's Nature Conservancy determined to develop a rivers conservation plan that would fill this need. Funded by a grant from the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, the goal of this plan is to take a hard look at the creek and the watershed that feeds it and suggest sensible ways that increased economic development and environmental quality can work together. Economic development and environmental preservation, ecological preservation, however we want to characterize it, go hand in hand. It's not an us versus them. It's not development versus the environment. It's not jobs versus the environment. It's not income versus the environment. This is sort of an old myth. We could go into why those old myths have prevailed for such a long period of time. Um, these were eras in which we were doing extractive activities and heavy industry, and Pittsburgh is a good example in which, in the old days, it probably was a world in which to get jobs, you had to destroy the environment. I think the times have changed. I think those myths are in the past. I think in the, the new millennium, we're talking about a situation where growth and environmental quality go hand in hand. To that end, a steering committee was established, drawing its members from a wide range of concerned business, government, and conservation groups in this area. What is a rivers conservation plan? A rivers conservation plan is a comprehensive look at the entire Chartier's Creek watershed. It's ecologically and environmentally based, where we deal with those environmental resources first, and then we build on that information to uh, assess the communities, the 28 separate municipalities in this watershed, and look at the economic base, the economic condition and health of this watershed area. Then we look at all three together, and it's integrated because they are all connected one with the other. And after we assess the problems and opportunities, then we develop a list of recommendations for action on how to clean up and restore the watershed as well as to take advantage of the opportunities. The concept of a watershed is a simple one, but it sometimes doesn't agree with the lines men draw on their maps. Nature forms the land into huge catch basins, and all the rain that falls inside that basin flows eventually to the bottom of the bowl. A network of small tributaries leads the water to progressively larger streams until it reaches a primary waterway. In this case, Chartier's Creek. Many people are surprised to learn that Chartier's Creek is the fifth largest watershed in southwestern Pennsylvania. Starting with its headwaters deep in the farmlands of Washington County, the Chartier's Creek watershed drains an astonishing 277 square miles. On its journey to join the Ohio River, just one mile from the skyscrapers of downtown Pittsburgh, the main channel travels a length of over 26 miles. 
The challenge for this river's conservation project is to find ways to provide local community planners with accurate data about this vast and complex watershed, to develop realistic suggestions to guide their future action plans, and to identify ways of educating people in a wide variety of communities to see that an improved natural water system can add to their quality of life, both environmentally and economically. A river's conservation plan is very important to the economic health of a region. And I think we have increasing evidence, and in fact, we're doing some studies in the Chartier's uh, watershed, of the relationship between environmental quality and property values. And the argument being, or the principle being, that improving the quality of this ecosystem, the quality of the environment, enhances the, the desirability of those locations. People want to live there, and they come in there, and they come in with high property values. People in Pittsburgh are no strangers to cleaning up their waterways. Rivers that were once industrial sewers now offer a wealth of recreational opportunity. Lakes and streams that are clean and healthy can also attract people who want to fish, boat, have a picnic, or simply find a place to sit quietly and watch the water. Where a trail or greenway follows the stream, they can come to walk or ride bicycles. Pleasant recreational areas give families a place to spend time together, to observe nature and the birds and wildlife that come to the water, a place to relax and teach a child the joys of skipping a stone. Nature preserves, parks, greenways, boat ramps, and shelters all provide places for people to enjoy our public waterways. There's very little time to lose if we want to protect this green valley. The pace of industrial and residential development in the airport corridor and along Interstate 79 has virtually isolated Chartiers Creek and the wildlife that lives there. The unique thing about the, the, the forest around, around the creek is it is so close to, to the city. These uh, Chartiers Creek runs, the ribbon, right through a very, uh, what was industrial, now it's turning into a suburban area. Uh, and it's no more anywhere than two or three miles at the most from a busy suburb. More than likely, it's just a matter of uh, a few hundred yards. And so the diversity of animals there is surprisingly rich. Uh, songbirds, things like blue-winged warblers, common yellowthroats, little tiny brightly colored songbirds, indigo buntings, these bright blue, brilliant songbirds that sing along the stream bank with this really great iridescent blue plumage that just sparkles in the sunlight. There are other birds too that migrate through there, the hawks like this, the red-tailed hawk, will migrate through the valley, um, as well as just about all, any species of falcon or eagle that, that lives in North America will come through these river valleys on their way south, probably just to the pure diversity of them and the numbers along the stream bank you'll find nowhere else. On Saturday for the Chartier's Nature Conservancy's um, land warming event, myself and a fellow environmental scientist from CEC, Mark Heibach, performed what we call a synoptic fish community survey. And the kind of information that we wanted to get from the survey was what kind of fish are present in Chartier's Creek, um, how many species and the composition of the, of the fish and, and the abundance, and especially in proportion to, to, to one another. Before we started the survey, I imagined that we would only get about three or four uh, species, which I call pollution tolerant. Um, the Environmental Protection Agency has developed uh, tolerance ranges for fish um, as being either pollution tolerant, pollution intolerant, or sensitive and intermediate, somewhere in between. So I guess that before our survey, we would get three or four tolerant species like creek chubs, white suckers, maybe some black-nosed dace and carp. Uh, however, after the survey, we ended up with 15 species total. Um, three of those species, which were the pollu pollution sensitive or intolerant. If you look at Chartier's Creek right here, it doesn't look like the best of water quality. A lot of the stream bottom is, is armored with uh, with iron from the abandoned coal mines, which discharge uh, upstream from here. And it was just really surprising that we got uh, three intolerant species, especially the long-nosed dace, which is primarily found in the Susquehanna River Basin. 
To clean up Chartiers Creek will not be an easy task. One of the largest problems is pollution from the many abandoned coal mines that honeycomb this region. And when the water flushes out of these mines, it carries the constituents with it, like we see here, where this discharge is very laden with iron, which is why there's the orange, reddish orange color uh, of the water. As the water flows out of the mines, a lot of times it'll be crystal clear, but as it's exposed to oxygen, the atmosphere, um, the metals will precipitate, and you'll get this iron formation, you'll get a white aluminum formation or a black manganese formation that really devastates receiving streams. Chartier's Creek has a, um, the watershed has a very strong history of coal mining. There's been coal mining going on in the watershed back until the middle 1800s. This area right here, we're standing in Scott Township. Um, this area was mined in the early 1900s. There is active mining in the southern part of the watershed as recently as the 1970s. And um, as a result of the mining that occurred before the 1970s, we have many polluted streams. Most of the tributaries between Carnegie south, southward, to Bridgeville are polluted. McLaughlin Run, Painter's Run, Scrubgrass Run, Whiskey Run, Tom's Run, um, Coal Run, and Miller's Run are all very badly polluted with mine drainage from old abandoned coal mines. Another major source of pollution is the unwanted discharges from older sewage systems. Many communities on the eastern side of Chartiers Creek have combined sewer systems that were built before the 1940s. In these combined systems, both stormwater and sanitary sewage are taken to the treatment center in the same pipe. During periods of heavy rain, the water load frequently exceeds the capacity of these old pipes. Untreated sewage is then released directly into the creek. Rebuilding these obsolete systems is a shockingly expensive project. Fortunately, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency has made the elimination of combined sewers a top priority. With public cooperation, this problem may be solved in the near future. One of the best ways to improve the stream is actually one of the easiest to envision. Simply providing a wide stretch of trees and vegetation to line the banks allows nature itself to protect the creek. Known as a riparian forest buffer, this natural barrier can filter out much of the pollution that runs off of roads and asphalt parking lots. These trees also hold the soil in place along the banks and shade the water to encourage increased fish populations. A riparian forest buffer also provides the perfect place to build a public walking trail or greenway. Protecting existing riparian buffers and promoting new ones is a perfect way for local governments to begin to preserve their waterways. This vast watershed affects people in many different types of communities. Widespread places that may never before have considered themselves connected. It's easy to agree that this sort of environment is good for a community. But how do we get there? How do we start to reverse decades of abuse? And how do we build for a better future? Citizen involvement is, is imperative. Without citizen involvement, what do our communities have to base their, any decisions they have uh, on? If citizens don't care and don't participate, they don't add any information. They don't allow the knowledge to be there that what can be done to make a change. And change comes about through dedication. Dedication, care, and concern. And that dedication shows itself in many ways. For a long time, you may not see the direct reaction of a concern for your environment. But little by little, as, as piece of information after piece of information becomes known, accepted, and, and valued by each and every person in your community and within your government, you begin to see the return. It may not happen today, it may not happen tomorrow, but it will happen. We see it all around us. We see it in greener communities. We see it in thoughts of greener conservation building. We see it in clean rivers that were once sewers. We see it in, in open lands that were absolutely going to be developed wholly five years ago. And now they're not. Now they're protected. This can happen. It can't happen in a void. It can't happen with people not caring. It all comes from the individual citizen caring enough to take a step forward and say, I want to participate.